Hello and welcome to this edition of Arlington Public News. I'm Paul Whirling. And I'm Carla Dorado. At Arlington Public News, we bring you stories of interest to Arlington and surrounding communities. In tonight's newscast, we tell you about a special Sister Cities partnership between Arlington and a small town in El Salvador called Tio Siente. We also present a new installment in our series, Your Arlington Dollar, and introduce Arlington Proud, a new project that acknowledges and celebrates special Arlingtonians who make a difference in our community. Plus, we bring you highlights from recent Spy Ponder Sports. That and more coming up next. Please stay with us. A ribbon cutting ceremony was held on November 21st to celebrate the Mass Ave rebuild coming to a close. Residents joined MassDOT, town officials, and state legislators at the event held at the corner of Grafton Street and Mass Ave. APN was there and brings you these highlights. Massachusetts Department of Transportation held a ribbon cutting ceremony on Saturday, November 21st for the Mass Ave reconstruction project. Members of the public joined officials from MassDOT, local state delegates, as well as town officials. The Arlington town manager, Adam Shaptelaine, spoke at the event saying, quote, The already vibrant East Arlington neighborhood stands to prosper even more with the safe, family-friendly roadway design, end quote. The $6.5 million project intended to improve safety and traffic flow on Mass Ave, from Pond Lane to the Cambridge Line. There are now bicycle lanes, bump outs at pedestrian crosswalks, and some additional traffic lights. The work was completed over two construction seasons. MassDOT says there are just a few punch list items to be addressed in the spring. For Arlington Public News, I'm Gabriella Kula. The Black Lives Matter banner outside the First Parish Unitarian Universalist Church in Arlington Center was recently vandalized for a second time. An identical banner was quickly rededicated by the parish. There are other Black Lives Matter banners around town, but the one in the center is the only one that has been vandalized. The Black Lives Matter banner in front of the First Parish Unitarian Universalist Church was vandalized twice on consecutive days over the Thanksgiving break. On November 24th, the word black was replaced with all on the banner. On Thursday, December 3rd, the Arlington Police Department announced that the suspected individual was found and had admitted to vandalizing the banner. According to Laurie Kenshaft, clerk of the First Parish Church, the church leadership is looking forward to talking with this individual, understand why he did what he did, and being part of the restorative process. These kinds of misguided acts call for conversation and learning, not punishment, she said. Laurie also wrote a blog touching on the issue for the diversity task group, of which she is a member. She addresses why she thinks black Black Lives Matter is important as a phrase. I believe that racism and racial inequalities have persisted in this country in part because too many people feel that black people's suffering is somehow less important, less suffering. During a recent visit to the church, ABN noted that the banner was once again in its customary position. For Arlington Public News, I'm Koala She. Up next, News intern Erica Benoon talks with Amy Spear from the Arlington Education Foundation's Board of Directors about the various important programs the AEF funds in the Arlington schools. The Arlington Education Foundation raises money to fund grants to implement new and improved programs at the Arlington Public Schools. I sat down and spoke with Amy Spear, a member of the Arlington Education Foundation Board of Directors, about these programs and what they do for the students and teachers. So the Arlington Education Foundation, we are a um, nonprofit, a charitable 501c3. Um, we are actually celebrating our 25th anniversary this year. And we are a charitable organization that raises money from the community, so parents, um, some community businesses, um, other concerned citizens, and we raise that money and then turn it around and award it in terms of grants to the Arlington Public Schools. And for the last three or four years, we've awarded about $100,000 each year uh, to the Arlington Public Schools through the generosity of Arlington. And can you tell me a little bit about the innovations in education programs specifically? Sure. So that is one of our grant categories. And that's really a category for teachers to think about maybe something different or um, unique that they want to bring to their classroom. So the grant category is for anywhere from $500 to $3,000. And teachers can apply for something that they want to do in their classroom. 
It could be a school that wants to bring a program uh, to the school. It could be a district-wide thing, but it tends to be kind of individual um, teacher classroom grants. So there's also a larger grant category we, we call the Development and Expansion Grant. And those come from the district level, usually maybe department heads, like the Department of Science or Modern Languages or English or History. And those typically come through the assistant superintendent, who's Dr. Laura Chesson. She has to approve and you know, sign off on those grants. And those grants are more like $10,000, five to $10,000 grants um, that come out in the winter. And then we have other categories. Um, there's a category called the Continuing Scholars Grant. And that is really for, um, it's a relatively new category for us. It was just introduced two years ago. And that is for individual teachers who want to do some type of a personal experience that will in turn benefit their teaching. And then you also have the Star AF STARS program yes. as well. Can you tell me a little bit about that program? Yeah, so STARS stands for, it's really cute, uh, school teachers are really special. And it's a way for anybody in the community, it's typically parents, to say thank you for all that the teachers do. So with a, a minimum of a $15 donation, um, you say the Spear family wants to thank Teacher Smith, you know, for all that they do. And that $15 donation goes to AEF, which in turn funds all these grants. And um, the teacher that is recognized gets a nice little certificate that says, you know, the Spear family thanks you for your efforts. And that program alone for us raises about ten dollars to $15,000 each year. With the height of the fall 2015 donation period coming to a close, the Arlington Education Foundation will be using the money to give back to the schools to excel the students' learning. For Arlington Public News, I'm Erica Matera Benoon. Well, Paul, both of my kids went through the Arlington school system, and I can tell you firsthand, those grants really, they're very educational, but they really bring the fun and learning back into the classroom. So much has been taken away, and, and those really are wonderful, wonderful things to support. It's a really great program that Arlington offers. I think we're lucky to have it in this, in this town here for all of the students in the community. And now it is our pleasure to introduce Arlington Proud, a new project that seeks out residents who make valuable contributions to our community and may not get the recognition they deserve. The first winners of the award are Deanne DuPont and Julie Kramer, the co-founders of Foodlink. News intern Gabriella Kula has the story. Congratulations to our first winners of Arlington Proud, who are Deanne DuPont and Julie Kramer, the co-founders of Foodlink. Foodlink is a nonprofit agency that picks up food that can no longer be sold from restaurants and grocery stores and then redistributes it to organizations and nonprofits that serve those in need. It does take a lot of time and energy and effort, but then when you see the benefit it is to so many individuals that it helps uh, keep me going and keep, keeps me driven. Their program helps low-income families, students, the elderly, the physically challenged, and many more. Without their combined efforts, most of this food would just be tossed by these stores. Um, well, environmentally, we know part of the reason we started this was we didn't want to see wasted food, knowing there were people who were hungry. It was a twofold a marriage. And the problem with the wasted food isn't just the fact that that apple or that pear or that cucumber is going in the, in the trash or the, or the compost but everything that came behind it is being wasted. It's a lot of energy, a lot of gas, a lot of water, and all of that that comes before you even get it goes to waste as well. So you're creating a lot of energy that doesn't need to be, that, that should be used. These two women, with the help of volunteers, wake up bright and early every day to get to Trader Joe's by 7.30 in the morning, then continue to go to Whole Foods before they've dropped off all their food they have collected. And it was physically exhausting and draining. And there were many times I was thinking, oh, I, I just can't keep doing this. But then Julie and I figured out more efficient ways of doing it. We solicited more volunteers, so we've spread the, the work out. In the past two years, Foodlink has collected over 44,000 boxes and served more than 2,000 families. Organizations that benefit from Foodlink include the Arlington Food Pantry, the Senior Center, the Boys and Girls Club, Arlington Eats, and many more. Deanne and Julie were also recognized last May as one of the recipients of the Arlington Boys and Girls Club 2015 George P. Faulkner Annual Citizens Award for Outstanding Service to Youth. 
The project that started in 2012 with just Julie and Deanne has now blossomed to around 75 volunteers and continues to grow. What we would like to do is to put it in writing so that another community anywhere could replicate this process. That's our greatest wish, to see it spread around. For Arlington Public News, I'm Gabriella Kula. APN is looking for nominations for our next Arlington Proud segment. If you know other special individuals who make a real difference in the community, drop us a line at news at acmi.tv. We want to hear from you. Your Arlington Dollar is a financial series that aims to shed light on all aspects of our town and school budgets. In this segment, APN talks to Alan Tosti, chair of the Finance Committee, about the Miniman Regional High School's proposed rebuild and its financial implications for Arlington. Hello and welcome to this edition of Your Arlington Dollar. I'm here with uh, the chairman of the Arlington's Finance Committee, Alan Tosti. Uh, Al, thanks so much for coming okay. in. I'm happy to be here. Clearly two very large uh, uh, financial uh, items to, to, to consider uh, coming up here in the very near future are a pair of rebuilds, school rebuilds, one for the Ar Arlington High School, which we may uh, talk about at some future date. But for today, we'd like to talk about the Minuteman High School situation. Yes. I think that many people understand that uh, Minuteman is a regional vocational high school that draws students from 16 member communities. Yep. With that as the starting point, can you kind of tell us how did this, how did the agreement to set up this school even come about and what are the general parameters of that agreement? Uh, so in the late 60s, uh, communities came together, formed a committee, committee put together a, a proposed regional agreement. Uh, went back to the 12 towns at that time, uh, got approval from the, uh, the 12 towns, uh, and then uh, along with bond authorizations, uh, and then proceeded in the uh, early to mid-70s to build Minutemen. We made a, a horrendous mistake uh, back in 1970s in approving this regional agreement. Not because we shouldn't have had a vocational school, uh, it, it offers a great deal for many of our students, but because the regional agreement was so unfair to Arlington in the, in the type of uh, uh, district we have. Uh, the problem is all the governance of the district is sort of one town, one vote. Uh, on the regional school committee, there are 16 or 12 members back then, but we had one vote uh, out of the 12 and then 16. Uh, we, our town meeting had no more authority than Dover's town meeting uh, to pick on them, even though Arlington today sends 150 students and Dover sends one. In order to pass an amendment uh, to the regional agreement, you need unanimous consent. And in order to leave the district, you need unanimous consent uh, among all of the towns. That brings us closer to the current situation, and the current situation is that um, Minuteman <coughs> is in need of, uh, of a rebuild. And um, my understanding is that the MSBA, the state board um, that oversees such projects, um, has agreed um, to that and will provide a certain amount of funding for this rebuild. Is, is, is that right? That is correct. Is it true then that each town has to also approve of the funds that would be required for the rebuild? Uh, there are two alternatives in um, passing the bonding authorizations. The regional school committee must vote, first of all, to authorize the, uh, the debt. So you can easily have um, 11 towns, uh, it has to be by a two-thirds vote. Okay. Um, you can have 11 towns who represent maybe 25% of the population of the school force this on the, uh, on the other towns who don't want it uh, or want to change uh, position. And then uh, it goes to the town meetings of each of the member towns. Any one of the 16 can veto it. Um, however, there is an optional plan, uh, which I believe Minuteman is seriously considering now, which is uh, they, can put it, they can go directly to the citizens. Uh, so they could have a district-wide vote uh, where the polls are, uh, you know, the, they choose the date, the polls are only open for eight hours, uh, and it's majority rule. Uh, so they can, in effect, bypass the town meeting. Uh, 
um, and we are going to need a major rebuild uh, of the Arlington High School, uh, which is, I think, in desperate need of that. Uh, if you take, um, if they ram uh, this Minute Mill rebuild project down our throats, uh, it's, it's $2 million a year in debt service. Um, it, that's a big chunk of money, you know, right out of our pockets mm -hmm. uh, on that. So uh, uh, unless we're able to get a debt exclusion uh, from the people for that, for that amount of money, it's a substantial sum of money. This is our only way to make an impact. The only time they need our support is when, uh, is for the incurrence of debt. Uh, and we've stated no regional changes to the regional agreement, uh, then we will not vote to support that debt. Uh, we support vocational education. Uh, we support Minuteman. We just want to see changes um, in, in the governance of the, uh, of the district. While I would say overall that the news is not, not great, um, that you have uh, passed on. You have made things very crystal clear, I think, in terms of what it is that we're looking at um, okay. in, with the Minuteman situation. So thanks very much. You're very welcome. Appreciate Thank it. you for having me. We'll look forward to talking to you again sometime. Great. For your Arlington Dollar, and on behalf of Alan Tosti, the chairman of our finance committee, I'm James Milan, and thanks for joining us. And now we bring you a special APN interview with two residents of Paris, France, News intern Koala Shea spoke with them about their experiences and reactions to the November 13th attacks in that city. Although the investigation of the Paris attacks that occurred on November 13th is still ongoing, APN had a chance to talk to a reporter who works for a Franco-Chinese newspaper in Paris and the director of Boston University Paris Center. They told us about the situation in Paris over the past weeks. The reporter recalled what happened on that Friday night, November 13, when the city was under attack. He was just 200 meters away from the Bataclan concert hall, where the major attack took place. He recounted his own experience. Around 9 p.m. on that night, people in my office started hearing many police cars and fire trucks passing by, which went on for about half an hour. We soon heard that shootings were happening in the 10th arrondissement and that about five or six people had been shot. Only later did we find out about the other attacks, like the suicide bombing at the Stade de France, where the French president was watching a football game. When I went out to investigate, at first it seemed like a pretty normal Friday night, with people drinking outside and not many realizing what had taken place. The attacks happened so suddenly, some people who saw the police blocking the roads felt confused and even quarreled with the officers. The atmosphere was intense. I was stuck in my office all night because both ways heading out were blocked by police barricades and public transportation was suspended. It was about midnight when I heard that the terrorists in Bataclan were shot dead. So the whole thing had been going on for about three or four hours. I left my office at 6 a.m. on the following morning and the barricades were still up. Rene Pombriand, the director of Boston University's Paris Center, also shared her personal reactions to this event. What's the situation like in France right now? Well, it's kind of like feeling hungover or kind of like someone hit you over the head. You know, you're kind of, woo, dizzy, and uh, you don't really, It's it happened all so fast and it was all so horrible that you just try to wake up from it all and then you realize, wow, it really is true what happened. You see a lot more military, a lot more police. You hear a lot of sirens, uh, a lot of people checking bags when you go into public places. Sometimes you have to open your coat also because it's winter now, so... In the metros, for example, they'll be closed sometimes because someone left a bag, so they're always worried it's a bomb, so they have to check it out first. Things like that. More annoying nuisances, but then again, everyone's used to it now. All, all U.S. programs in Paris no, and in France, no one decided to close because the French schools are still operating, the universities are still have classes, and as of the Monday, everyone was back to school, so... There's no reason why, you know, we should think that this is going to happen again or that our students will be targeted. I mean, but we continue to run our classes and our internships. And next semester, the good news is that for the moment, no one's dropped out uh, and no one in other programs either. So that's all good. 
据《哈尔后报》，France's embrace door to the United States sent out a message to all French citizens resident in the U.S. He says, "In this difficult period of our history, the support expressed for our home country is a valuable source of comfort." President Obama declared strongly in the hours following the attacks that the United States is on our side in the fight against extremism and terrorism. Such messages remind us of the string of friendships that unites both of our peoples. Please look for the extended version of this interview and a blog post on the Paris attacks on our website. For all in public news, I'm Koala Shea. You know, Carlo, the impact of those terrorist attacks in Paris that's going to be felt there for a long time. But it's、mm. good to see that things are finally calming down a little bit. <laughs> well, the French are stubborn people. It won't keep them down or in very long. Tayo Sinte is a small village in El Salvador with which Arlington enjoys a special sister city friendship. ACMI's youth coordinator Jessica Barnhouse has been very vis- busy visiting all of Arlington's fourth-grade classrooms to train students in how to use iPads to make quality video. <laughs> Wondering what the connection is? Just watch. Christina Capaldo's fourth-grade class at Bishop Elementary School participated in a stop-motion workshop led by Arlington Community Media's youth coordinator Jess Barnhouse. This workshop is a part of a series of lessons to teach the younger generations about media literacy in today's technological world. The students were excited to get the opportunity to work with their mobile devices and learn how to use the app Stop Motion Studio to create movies. Using a photographed frame-by-frame technique, stop motion animation shows the manipulation of a set or prop, giving the appearance of it moving on its own. Just started by explaining the basics of the app that they'd be using, and after some short guidance, the students split into groups and collaborated on their specific animations. So to do an animation, you guys take a picture, move something. Take a picture, move something. Take a picture, and then like 500 pictures later, you guys have like a four-second animation. Stories ranged from Jaws remakes to funny pictures of the students. We're making a movie that's kind of similar to Jaws, but not exactly. So it's about this shark, this small, this sh- shark that stuffs really small and eats more and more and more and more until it's finally super duper big, and then it's gonna explode. After half an hour, they shared their animations with one another, excited to see what their peers had created. At the end of the lesson, the students were excited to download the app and try it on their own time outside of the classroom. This workshop. Is preparing the students for the Arlington Sister City program with Teo Sente, where fourth grade students in Arlington will create movies and send them to students in Teo Sente and vice versa, in order to make the outreach of the town of Arlington extend past country borders and help push the world towards being a single community. The Arlington Teo Sente project will continue to move forward, but someone else will be taking the helm for ACMI. Jessica is leaving her position here on December 18th to devote herself to full-time independent filmmaking. We will miss Jess very much, and we want to wish her the best in her new career. Up next is our sports spotlight, featuring coverage from the annual Thanksgiving football game between Arlington High School and Arlington Catholic. Hi, I'm Phil Arcaro for this week's Sports Spotlight. On Wednesday, November 25th, the Spy Ponders were victorious against Everett and Kiss 108's Turkey Toss. The trophy was presented by Sports Center Five's Mike Lynch. Closest finish in the history of Turkey Toss. Arlington, Arlington's your winner this year. Way to go! Wow, a photo finish. A photo finish. That's the trophy. They hold up the trophy for the crowd to see. The Ponders then took to Pierce Field on Thanksgiving morning to compete in their annual rivalry against Arlington Catholic. The weather was great, and with injuries on both sides, it proved to be a close game, unlike past Thanksgiving Day classic shutouts. The Spy Ponders gained yards early in the first quarter, with senior quarterback Alec Coleman pitching the ball from the 30-yard line to freshman Corey Dotton to set them up at the 16-yard line. Here's Coleman with a little pitch. He's looking for the Froshamore, and it's caught. Complete to Corey Dutton. Ponders scored their first touchdown with Alec Coleman running the ball over the end zone. They go right at Alex Coleman over the middle, and it's a bang and a bang and a boom. Gobble gobble, Spy Ponders take the lead.、Here's、Field goal for the extra point by senior Clark Ewan brought the Ponders to seven nothing with seven minutes left in the first quarter. Arlington Catholic responded with an exciting touchdown thrown by senior quarterback Christian Rosati from the 15-yard line to senior Jack Ryan to bring the score to seven to six at the end of the、Jack、second quarter. Ryan got a foot down in the end zone. 
Rashad and Ryan, a bullet. It's a wow, two what a left catch side. by Ryan. To the 30, to the 20, he's got the edge. But, but a huge gain, Houston over the left-hand side. Wow, 32-yard gain by Houston. And, and so the score remained until the fourth quarter when Alec Coleman ran the football for a 30-yard touchdown, his 14th run this year. Touchdown, Spy Ponders! Final score was 14-6 with the Spy Ponders taking home the helmet trophy. Keeping with tradition, the post-game ceremony included each team picking a player of the game from the opposing side. Jack Ryan won the title for Arlington Catholic, and Alec Coleman won for the Ponders. Let's go to post-game reaction and highlights from both coaches and players. Then guys battle and you know go back and forth, and it was hard fought. You see it go down the right to the last last seconds of the game, but it was a great game. Our play guys played their heart out, you know, and really bounced back after a couple of really blowouts the last couple of years. We came bounce back with a great, great team effort today. Our guys played great. The whole team from top to bottom played well. Um, the kicking game, you know, was a legitimate factor. Clark Ewan with those punts were, you know, it was unbelievable the way he was flipping the field. We had our seniors lead the way, and then uh, our underclassmen played at a level that was deserving uh, of their last game. Talk about that final play. Um, I don't know, planning on running out of bounds, just winning the game right there, but... Wanted to take it to the house, put some more points on the board. Very stressful. Very oh, stressful. <laughs> don't, don't uh, criticize yourself. That was the game. That was the game-winning interception. He, he, uh, he took a couple of hits. Great trip. The Ponders finished the season six and five, while the Cougars wrapped up with a two and nine record on the year. I'm Phil Arcaro, and that was your Arlington Sports Spotlight. And now, last but not least, we present the Arts and Entertainment Calendar, highlighting activities in and around Arlington for you and your family. Spread the holiday cheer this weekend with the town of Arlington. Light up the holiday tree, sing Christmas carols, and shop and dine. Christmas is just round the corner. Let the celebrations begin. Meet your cute furry friends at Sunrise Assisted Living, where the Salvation Army is hosting its annual teddy bear parade. Hundreds of costumed teddy bears will be on display this Saturday. 13 Forest Gallery is hosting its 8th annual holiday show, Plenty, featuring artworks from 46 local artists. Find unique art pieces, holiday ornaments, cards and toys for both young and old. For you all Star Wars fans, Art Launch is hosting a Star Wars theme party on December 10th to celebrate the upcoming movie release. Come find out if the force is with you. The Robbins Library is hosting a youth craft sale on December 12th. Shop for ingenious craft items and give a boost to the enterprising youth of Arlington. Well, you know, Paul, there is also a lovely window decorating contest going on. A lot of the businesses are participating in, mm -hmm. and my business as well, the Artful Heart Gallery. And we have a gingerbread house in ours, and it's really beautiful. Laura Morissette uh, just completed it, and we're donating it, or actually the proceeds from a raffle, to AYCC. So if you like it, come on in. And we'd like to see as many of you as possible at the tree lighting ceremonies. Come down, ring in the holiday season, and make merry. We hope to see you there. We also want to bid a fond farewell to two of our interns, Gabriella Kula and Erica Matera Banoon. We thank you for all your contributions and we wish you great success in your studies and in your careers. Thank you for joining us this week to explore local events and issues around Arlington. Check out extended interviews and our latest segments on the web at news.acmi.tv. And don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at Arlington Public. Please join us next time for another edition of Arlington Public News. I'm Carla Dorado. And I'm Paul Whirlin. See you next time. <laughs>